Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, it's not every day that you get a dominant champion. And by dominant, I mean the best record in the league, uh, a title win where they blow out their opponent in the last three games, including two on the road. Right? That's what you're getting with the San Antonio Spurs on a futures play for the 2014-2015 season at a plus 450. Now, as I stated in an earlier video, the only reason you're getting such big odds on such a juggernaut team is because the Miami Heat at plus 250 are ludicrously, really absurdly overrated. Right? And I mean absurdly overrated. We don't even know right now if LeBron's going to come back. And even if LeBron came back, right, with Bosch, with Dwayne Wade, they just got beaten up, and I mean beaten up badly in the last three games of the NBA Finals. Now, this video has been spurred, pun intended, has been spurred by Tim Duncan re-signing for next year with the San Antonio Spurs. So you're getting one of the league's best players, certainly one of the most effective players in the postseason, right? A guy with a handful of rings who, even this year, in one of the games in the NBA Finals, pulled down 15 rebounds. Also, you're getting the continuity of having a star player who everyone in the locker room knows because he's been there for more than a decade, right, with a coach who everyone in the locker room knows because he's been there for more than a decade. You're getting great players. You're getting a great coach. More importantly, you're getting bigger continuity. It's not just Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, right, uh, Cowie Leonard. These guys are going to be back. Danny Green. You think these guys go anywhere else? I don't. Boris Diaw, right? Let me say this, too. I understand some of these guys contractually could leave, right? Boris Diaw could theoretically decide he's going to re-sign with another team. You think he's going to, after getting his first ring, after starting games in the NBA Finals on a team that allows him to be creative and realizes that inch per inch... Right, we'll coin a new phrase here. This is basketball's equivalent of pound for pound, inch per inch. Boris Diaw has some of the best back to the basket skills in the game. Right? It would be obvious if he were 6'10. Right? Trust me, a lot of these big guys have no clue what back to the basket is. Boris Diaw does. Watch him when he's in the low post. Sometimes he's not successful. Why? Because the guy sticking him is 6'10 and can reach up and block a shot. But Boris Diaw with his back to the basket has serious offensive skills and he's an excellent passer. Now who could knock off a team like this? I don't believe a team pasted together can do so. Let's remember when LeBron got to Miami and we were hearing all this big three hype, they went out and lost. That first NBA Finals to the Dallas Mavericks. Right? I can't just take a superstar from City A, plug him into Team B, and then think that in a chemistry sport like basketball, that superstar is going to mesh, and when the bullets start flying, and an NBA Finals get in, gets into games 5, 6, and 7, that that team is going to be able to seamlessly handle the pressure like a team that just went to back-to-back -back NBA Finals and that just won the NBA Finals in five games, right? So, let me just say, if LeBron leaves Miami, let's say he joins the Clippers, and that's the rumor, right? It's going to be a new situation. 
The Clippers themselves might not fully learn how to play with LeBron in that first season, right? It'll take some time. Also, let's stop kidding ourselves. If LeBron were to go to the Clippers, this is a salary cap league. You're going to have to say goodbye to some talent. Right? This isn't just randomly picking up talent. You have a limited number of roster spots. You're going to have to remove talent from the team. Right? So, if you're thinking about LeBron in Los Angeles, right? You're going to have to do the other side of the equation. Okay, we know the addition. LeBron to the Clippers, let's say for argument's sake. Who are we subtracting? Blake Griffin? DeAndre Jordan, doesn't that change things a little bit? As for other teams that have continuity, right? You know what? This is the rough neighborhood part of the internet, right? Oklahoma City, as far as I'm concerned, as long as Russell Westbrook is the point guard of that team, I don't believe they're going to win an NBA championship, right? I'm sorry. I don't want a point guard who's really a two playing a one. Now, I hope the people in Chicago are hearing me clearly there, too. Derrick Rose, I'm sorry. As long as Derrick Rose is your point guard, if he comes back and he's playing the point, I don't care if Chicago adds LeBron James, you're not going to win an NBA championship. Right? Point guards who chuck it up, they're great for league highlights they attract fans they're great for selling shoes look I'm a gambler just trying to win a bet I'm not interested in any of that I see Kevin Durant out there one of the best shooters of our lives I mean I'm telling you when I look at Kevin Durant I'm thinking back to George the Iceman Gervin if you're my age you know who Gervin was right I'm, he, he's one of the best scorers I've ever seen and there are games, and let's be real here, there are games where he's neglected. There are games where you have a great shooter. Oklahoma City needs a basket. And that great shooter doesn't even touch the basketball. Go back and look at the stats from last year. You're going to see that Oklahoma City did just fine without Russell Westbrook for many games. Right? KD actually was more successful when Russell Westbrook was not in the lineup. Don't be fooled by Westbrook's totals. Just like in Chicago, don't be fooled by Derrick Rose's totals. It's demoralizing when you have a point guard who is your lead scorer or who, in Oklahoma City's case, is sucking up a lot of the shot attempts, right? And let's not kid ourselves, too. Westbrook and Rose, they're more of a scoring-type point guard. What that means is they're not the playmakers. They're not Magic. They're not Jason Kidd. They're not, with a nod to a young guy who, to me, is on the make, they're not Ricky Rubio, right? That's the kind of point guard you need if you're playing with Kevin Durant. You need a point guard who, Chris Paul, right? You need a Chris Paul to play with Kevin Durant, a point guard who understands that I have an elite talent here who can put the ball in the basket. I need to find a way to make sure that when the game's on the line and we need that basket, that I put him in a position to win. It can't be a I'm going to get mine type point guard. Right? So to me, as long as you have Tim Duncan with Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili in the Western Conference, right? And this is especially after that infamous playoff series where OKC came back and knocked off the Spurs. Let's view that as a once in a lifetime event because I don't think it's going to happen again right let's view that as a learning experience as long as Tim Duncan and company are healthy and are in the Western Conference I don't see Oklahoma City who they just closed out on OKC's home court 
I don't see Oklahoma City getting past them with their current lineup. If Russell Westbrook somehow gets traded for Chris Paul, all bets are off. Even I'll be wearing an OKC hat. But until that happens, I think the Spurs are the better team. Also, Chicago, let me just say this. Let's say you get Carmelo. How is Carmelo going to fit in with Derrick Rose? We know Carmelo would fit in seamlessly with Chris Paul. How's he going to fit in with Derrick Rose? You tell me. Also, look at the Chicago situation carefully. You're hearing people talking about, oh, we're going to have to amnesty Carlos Boozer and all this other stuff. Again, if you're going to add a superstar, you need to think about the subtraction part of the equation. Right? You're going to have to factor all of that in. Right. Also, let me just say this, too, and I don't say it lightly. Let's say Carmelo goes to Houston. Now, I'll agree. That's intriguing. That intrigues me more than Carmelo in Chicago. James Harden has already shown that he can coexist with Kevin Durant. Right. I think James Harden is the kind of guy who can coexist with anybody. Right. Even though he himself is a dominant scorer. Right, my concern with Houston is you have a center, quite frankly, that's in decline. Right? First off, can we just all agree that Dwight Howard from the free throw line is one of the NBA's ongoing disasters? It's painful to watch. Right? I guess DeAndre Jordan from the free throw line is equally painful, but certainly. The part of his game that has him at the free throw line hurts the team. Now keep in mind too, we all want to believe that these big men are going to play forever. They're going to last forever. Hasn't Dwight Howard had some injury issues in the past? Hasn't he? Also take a look at his game versus let's say Another Rocket Center's game, and I, I'll agree, comparing anyone to Akeem Olajuwon is an injustice to the younger player, right? Olajuwon, simply put, since I've been watching basketball, might be the best center I've seen. And that includes an era of, you know, watching Shaquille O'Neal's entire career, right? That includes watching David Robinson, right? Please. To the casual fan out there, don't talk to me about Yao Ming and guys like that. Right? But I'll say this. The thing with Dream was Dream could literally drop a 10 to 15 footer on you. Right? In addition to a spectacular low post game, Dream actually had a game a little bit away from the basket. Right? Take a look at Tim Duncan. Aren't there times when Tim Duncan is popping jumpers aren't there with Dwight Howard it's all underneath the basket it's all underneath the basket and he's not the offensive juggernaut under the basket that Shaquille O'Neal was look at the points per game it's not high 20s he's not that guy Right? He's high teens. He's not high 20s. Also, look at the block shots. Right? Let's just say he's not a three block a game guy. That's not who he is. Right? Dare I say, the public seems to equate him with the elite centers of the past. He's not. Right In a head-to-head -head matchup, I'd rather have Tim Duncan because Tim's team is able to do more with Tim Duncan at center. Given Duncan's passing ability, given Duncan's longer range game, given Duncan's angles, right? Duncan's a guy who can bank it off the backboard. Given Duncan's fundamentals, wasn't his nickname the big fundamental? Right? That's Duncan. 
That's not Dwight Howard. Right? So my point is simply, if Carmelo joins Houston, there's going to be the adjustment period. Right? Again, superstars joining new teams, that new team's not going to be top of the food chain their first year. They're not going to be as good as they'll become. Right? But then you have to factor in the fact that, let's face it, Patrick Beverly, he's not a point guard. Let's just call it as it is. Right? Dwight Howard, he's not Dream. He's not Shaq. Right? And so to me, Houston with Carmelo Anthony, let's just talk about the free agent matchups that fit. Houston with Carmelo Anthony isn't really a team, in my opinion, that can beat Tim Duncan and a well-oiled San Antonio Spur team that's made back-to-back -back NBA championships and just closed out the last three games of this NBA Finals, right? Back-to-back -back championship appearances, right? The Heat did beat them in seven, right? And then they come back the next year, take out the Heat in five. Shut out the Heat on the Heat's home court. I don't think Houston beats that team next year. So, in the big scheme of things, I'll just say you're getting a plus 450. In other words, I bet 100, I win $450, plus I get my 100 back. On the San Antonio Spurs, I don't know if the Spurs win the NBA championship next year. You're going to have a few futures positions. But at these odds with this leverage, it's worth a position right here. You know what they say, savvy gamblers bet early and then bet late. Right? All I'm saying is the early line right now is mispriced. A plus 450 when you know Tim Duncan's coming back? You got to be kidding me. Also, Tony Parker, where's he going to go? He'll be back with San Antonio. They just put another ring on his finger. Right? Guys who understand how hard it is to win an NBA championship, when they're on a team that's doing just that, they're hesitant to leave. Right? The Spurs take care of their players. You know that just by the length at which multiple players have stayed with the team. Tim Duncan is getting $10.3 million next year. You know if Tim Duncan just decided to sign with another team, he'd get many more millions than that. Just compare and contrast what he signed for with what Carmelo's asking. Then look at the rings on their fingers. If you had one vote for the Basketball Hall of Fame, who would it be? Tim Duncan or Carmelo? If you were asked who has had the better career, who would it be? Tim Duncan or Carmelo? If you wanted to win an NBA championship next year and you wanted a guy who you knew was capable of doing that, who would it be? The guy who's just won his fifth or the guy who's never gotten to an NBA Finals? But yet, Tim Duncan is re-signing with the San Antonio Spurs. Frankly, that's all I need to know to accept a 450 on a team that just closed out the NBA Finals in five games. Right? We'll continue to talk about the NBA. There will be other plays that you make on a futures prop. Understand, you need to view this like playing chess. Right? You want certain positions at certain prices. So that if one of these teams win, you're in line collecting, netting a profit. I think the San Antonio Spurs right here at a plus 450 is an outstanding bargain. Seriously, how many players defensively are better in this league than Cowie Leonard? You're telling me he's back with Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker next year? And you're going to give me a plus 450? Sign me up. Finally, let me say this. Say I have a few more seconds here. Golden State. I'll agree they're a dangerous team. Very dangerous. But again, they're talking about getting rid of Clay Thompson, right? As you hear these configurations, you know, pick up Kevin Love, 
you need to think about who are you giving up. In other words, is, is Kevin Love joining the team that just made the playoffs, or is he joining a team that just made the playoffs minus one of their stars, or minus two of their stars? David Lee's name has been bandied about in the trade talks. Right? Let's go one step further. You and I know the way these things are. The elite teams have point guards who don't turn over the ball that much. Right? Ball management is crucial in basketball. You can't be turning over the ball a lot, allowing the other team fast breaks and points off turnovers, and then expect to compete. Steph Curry's handle. Look at the numbers. Isn't that a concern? Is he a one or a two? How are the Golden State Warriors going to solve that issue? Because it costs them in some games. Right? Let me just say, too, if I were LeBron James, just hypothetically, right? I would look hard at the Warriors. You have Jerry West, one of the best basketball minds of any era, as a consultant on that team. Forget the consultant title, right? Jerry West is a guy with big influence on that franchise. Understand it was Jerry West who showed up to Gilbert Arenas' workout and then decided that the Warriors were not going to pursue Jerry West. Understand the way real power operates. Real power doesn't have a title. Right? Real power doesn't talk a lot about the power it has. You see Jerry West and you think that he's just some team ambassador for fan relations. He's not. He's one of the architects of this Warrior team. Right? This Warrior team has made the playoffs the last two years. Now, if I'm a superstar, like LeBron James, I'm about to turn 30. And I want big endorsement opportunities. I want to hang around people who are on the go, who are changing the world. Are there more innovative companies in the United States right now than Google? than Apple, than Facebook. Folks, it's all here in the Bay Area. Right? Now keep in mind, I'm here saying it's here in the Bay Area. I'm a Knicks fan. Okay? The Warriors love them. I'm a Knicks fan. I'd love to see LeBron <laughs> wearing Nick colors, but I'll concede the Knicks are farther away from a title than the Golden State Warriors. If I'm LeBron and I need a shot-blocking center, something I didn't have in Miami, I realize the value of a center and I'm tired of seeing teammates like Chris Bosh trying to cope with the other team's big man. Understand the Warriors have Andrew Bogut under contract. Understand Steph Curry can stretch the field. We know he's really a two. LeBron, if you want to be Magic Johnson, what team's going to give you a better opportunity to do that than the Golden State Warriors. If you want to get big time endorsements, right? Google right now is about to expand a driverless car, right? Forget the dominance of the search engine. Forget the dominance of Google Maps. Forget the dominance of the Android operating mobile system. Google's taking it to a new level. Understand too, Oracle is in the Bay Area. If you're into cloud-based computing, you know what I'm talking about. You have spectacular promotional opportunities out here. You also have, you know, hedge funds, Sand Hill Road, that's a brand name for countless hedge funds, right? You have hedge funds, you have deep pockets, you have people looking for the kind of excellence that you bring to the table. If I'm LeBron James, I would certainly consider what Jerry West's Golden State Warriors have to offer. Anyway, enough of this video. Let me know what you think. Tim Duncan and the Spurs at a plus 450. It's Christmas time in June. Sign me up. Right? I don't need to watch that line drop any further. I'll agree 
when LeBron or Carmelo or Kevin Love, when these superstars land someplace, there's going to be a ripple effect and the line might even get more out of whack. I'll tell you what, I might sweeten the position then, but I'm not going to let a plus 450, especially when the Heat are plus 250, think about that. I'm not going to let a plus 450 pass me by when I know now something I didn't know last week, which is that Tim Duncan will be back. Take a hard look at it. Let me know what you think. If you have other futures plays that entice you, make the case here in the comment section to this video. This is a gambling community. Let's try to share the knowledge and help everyone. Thanks for stopping by.